there are few things more iconic than the Western. Clint Eastwood, John Wayne, cowboys out on the range. The heroes we know, uh, the lawman, sheriff, marshal, cowboy. The villains of the outlaw, bandit, bank robber, train car heister, evil prospector. The Western is a very fixed genre in many ways. It has facets that play off itself, and it's a simple structure. Michael Martin Murphy might have put it best in his song, Cowboy Logic. There's a great American hero we all look up to. When the times are hard and chips are down, he knows just what to do. Now a cowboy's got a set of rules he lives by day to day. And if you ask for his advice, well, he'll more than likely say, if it's a fence, mend it. If it's a dollar bill, spend it. Before it burns a hole down in them jeans. If it's a load, truck it. And if it's a punch, well, duck it. And if she's a lady, treat her like a queen. That's cowboy logic. Every cowboy's got it. It's in the way he lives his life and the songs he sings. Well, that's cowboy logic. And every cowboy's got it. He's got a simple solution to just about anything. My terrible singing aside, the Western really is a statement piece. The central character, the iconic figurehead with the 10 gallon hat, flannel shirt, and spurs of the cowboy really is simple, stoic, moral, wild, and uncomplicated. The West, for its own moniker, isn't strange, it's just tough. This gives us a lot of great content, and it also comes with strong set expectations. The simple framework does translate well onto another common theme, something we've talked about before on this channel. Hell and death, or the afterlife. It's pretty easy to take Western justice, simple, clean, eye for an eye, martial versus criminal, and apply it to the afterlife. But what happens if, while you take that motif, you also subvert a genre? Well, that might give you West of Dead, a roguelike that I've really enjoyed playing through and that I'm here to talk about today. The game follows a purgatory-bound cowboy as he adventures, and we're gonna see how that builds a world and aesthetic all its own. I'm Huey, this is the channel Delta, guide in their vehicle to the world of storytelling, and let's giddy up on into this one. Now, I'm gonna break down gameplay first. You play as Mason, a former lawman turned burning skull cowboy dude walking through purgatory. I actually quite like Mason. I think he's a strangely likable protagonist and I enjoy playing as him and I enjoy cosplaying as him. He's a cool look. I really wanna like get in on that. But to break down how the game actually works, uh, it's a roguelike through and through. As far as my experience with the genre goes, which is pretty limited. You find yourself in a variety of locations. You always start in the crypts, but you go to the mines, the town, the bayou, uh, I don't know, there's a lot. The forest, I think, is even one. And as you move between these locations, uh, you fight different enemies in different kinds of battles. The formats vary by location. Uh, each location has unique enemies, and they meld together, some share them, some are different, as well as hazards in some places. And most rooms have a combination of melee enemies, uh, ranged enemies, and maybe a couple special or mixed enemies that will try to melee you, but uh, shoot things first, or they explode when they're near you. Similarly, you'll occasionally get mini bosses. One that sticks out in my mind, because they seem to happen frequently is these golems that will burst up from the ground uh, 
They're slow moving, but you can't do any damage except to their back, and most enemies track you, meaning they change facing. So you have to get really good at your roll timing to roll out of the way as they do an attack to kind of get them stuck in their attack animation so you can finish them off with some criticals to the back. Eventually, you'll find yourself in boss rooms fighting either outlaws, who are kind of generic boss enemies that uh, show up with some frequency. They're actually pretty fun and not too tough, to be honest. I found them easier, though I was getting better stuff. We'll talk about that more in a moment. And the story villain of the Preacher, who Bauer, uh, the guy calling himself the Preacher, he's actually a criminal, is the man who put you here and killed you. So this is Mason's quest to stop the Preacher's influence over Purgatory. He's stopping people from going east and west of dead. But how do you get through these levels? Well, it's pretty standard Western fare with the weapons. You have revolvers and other pistols, rifles, and shotguns. I stuck mostly to pistols because they are quick firing and quick to reload with lots of shots. Trade-off being relatively low damage. The rifles are a mixed bag. Uh, they can have any kind of reload time and any kind of ammo quantity, but you have to hold down to aim them, and it takes a little longer than I'd like. They kind of, you leave yourself really vulnerable while you're trying to aim them, to be honest. The shotguns are a mix of the two. You don't need to hold down to aim, and they do spread damage, but they are probably the slowest. But whatever floats your boat style-wise, you're always wielding two weapons, and they all feel pretty good. They're pretty fun. I would steer away from the rifles, but that's just me. As far as tools go, uh, you have two tools in your inventory at all times. The starter ones are a throwing axe, a dynamite, a little reload upgrade, it lets you reload your weapons faster, and most, oh man, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the fourth one. It's the decisive blade. It's this quick uh, melee ranged weapon. Uh, this is where the game gets a little bit more, I don't know, gamey feeling to an extent. Up till now, it's felt pretty thematic. Uh, these are just helpful. The axe is unique. It ranged. You throw it at an enemy. The dynamite's a little less powerful, but it hits a group. You can reload faster, and the blade does a lot of damage, but it's really close only. There are trade-offs. Uh, personally, I always just have dynamite and axe just because they're spamble, and I don't really think about them. I prefer to use the guns and the dodge mechanics already in the game. After that, you have the charms. These are uh, special non-leveling items that give you some kind of buff alongside the health potion you have, which you can obviously just drink to regain health. The first charm you get is the defender's charm. You get to get behind cover after taking some damage and you can recover a portion of the health lost. The next one, at least that I got, though at this point you can start to choose, we'll talk about more why in a second, was the aggressor's charm. When you take damage, you can turn around and shoot back, which works really well with the pistols because uh, one bullet regains a lot of health and you have a lot of bullets if you're running two six shooters. So, cool selection there. The main thing about the game is uh, within run progression. If you've played a roguelike, each run you have to progress through it again from the start. That's true here. That's what the game is, it's that genre. That may not appeal to you. It didn't appeal to me when I first picked up roguelikes, but I liked this one for a couple reasons, uh, and that is how you get new stuff. There are two currencies in the game, Iron and Sin. Iron drops from all the enemies, and Sin drops relatively frequently, and you can spend both. Iron is spent within game levels at a little merchant cart where he sells three items. Oftentimes, you'll be able to find one higher ranked version of something you're holding or a weapon that you like to use. Though if you don't, there's no harm in saving it. You don't need to upgrade unless you're really struggling because you might be able to get two better things at the next card. It carries over so long as you're surviving the areas. Sin you use at the end of a run and you purge it. You purge it, you get a, a cross run tracking for unlocking items for future runs. I got the guns that I like to use by purging my Sin and investing in them over a couple areas or if it was a really expensive thing, a couple runs. And then it's unlocked forever. That's what I like, is that the cooler gear, the guns, uh, once you unlock them, they would start dropping in the levels, period. They were always there, they weren't going anywhere. And that's a nice change. Uh, maybe other roguelikes do that, but I appreciated it here because it really did mean that I felt like I progressed over time in addition to just moving the story forward. 
At the end of the day though, when Mason dies, he dies. There's no redo this section of the run. You go back to the title screen, you gotta start a new run from the beginning. The story progresses each time you kill the preacher. Uh, you move chapters, but other than that, you just keep fighting your way through the same stuff. You always start in the crypts, and then you can choose where to go, either to a random location or direct to the bayou, which I personally wouldn't recommend. I didn't love the bayou, but you can go wherever you'd like. And that's the game. Uh, progression is the last thing that really gets added into all of that. Those are true across runs. Progression is customized by you as you go through the run. So weapons drop at higher tiers or ranks, so do tools, meaning that you can get a pistol with, a, with better damage. The other stats on those aren't going to change, but the damage will go up. Similarly for the items, the damage doesn't go up, but the cooldown goes down. Charms don't change. Uh, think of the charms in Hollow Knight for this. It's very much like that, but you only get one. Similarly, you can upgrade Mason. Mason himself has three categories. You can get more health, uh, do more damage with your weapons, or have shorter cooldown times in your items, which is the main attractions of each upgrade path. Personally, never do the items. I just don't find them that useful. Maybe if they cool down really quickly, I would, but I just prefer to use the actual guns. And that's playing through West of Dead. It's a blast. I really, I really do think so. It's not super expensive. You can pick up a copy and I would recommend it. The mechanics are solid, it looks great, and it does a good job creating an atmosphere, which is what we're gonna talk about next. Right off the bat with West of Dead, we can see that there are two kind of genre-esque things at play, West and Dead. So how do those break down? Well, we'll start with Westerns. Uh, as Sean and Gus of Psych would say. Well, while well, you two are sitting here playing Cowboys and uh, uh. Just Indians is offensive. And that's true. Uh, one of the biggest marks against Westerns as a genre, at least when they started, and in my mind sometimes still, is their portrayal of Native groups. Uh, Native American groups often get treated relatively poorly, either treated as monstrous and less human than the white cowboy protagonists, or conniving and unabashedly evil, or stupid allies. Frankly, I don't like that. I don't think it's good. Uh, I know this accent that I'm doing is really odd, and I apologize for that, but I'm trying to, for the most serious bits, stay out of doing any kind of like gruff tone, because I do really think that talking about these kind of cultural things, it's important to be serious. That's why I'm actually really happy with West of Dead's portrayal. Alongside characters like the Preacher, you actually have the Wendigo, uh, who is a, a, a monster from folk and cultural views from, I believe, Native Americans. I'm not really familiar with it and I'm not comfortable speaking on it in depth or in detail, but it was nice to see it and I felt like portrayals of uh, other groups' beliefs and views were handled well in the game. If a member of one of those groups or someone more educated than me turns around and says, actually they weren't, listen to them, but for the time being I was quite happy with those portrayals. I thought the game does a good job of not feeling like the traditional Western view of cowboys versus Indians, or something uncomfortable like that. Also, you have other refutations of the genre. I mean, Mason, as a character, isn't your Clint Eastwood. He's not looking cool with a beard and a hat. No, he's a cowboy whose skull is on fire. Frankly, I love it. I think it's great. I want to dress up like Mason for something. It would be so fun. But Right off the bat, you definitely don't get the kind of raw appeal of the leading man in a lot of cowboy stories. There's no clear hero here because Mason looks kind of scary. Now, of course, he's the hero. You're playing as him, and he's on a journey to get rid of the preacher who's preventing people from going east and west of the dead. But his look really is kind of pushing back on the expectations. Similarly, in the song we talked about up top, there's this view of cowboys as stoic and simple, and this game is not that. Between its mechanics and its looks, the kind of simple, moral, down-to-earth, salt-of-the-earth nature of the cowboy isn't here. The West loses, I mean the Wild West, loses its specific flair that it has. It goes away and it, it diminishes. And for those reasons, you really get a better game. If you started out really strong, even if 
it was still a roguelike, I don't think it would be fun. If Mason was the definitive hero from the top, from the get-go, it wouldn't be a challenging run every time. By the genre's own conventions, the game's theme is pushed back on. Sometimes it's literally better to sprint back to the room you were in before that you cleared out, hunker down, and wait for the variable speeds of enemies to spread them out so that you can pick them off one by one. That's not super cowboy-esque. It doesn't have a magnificent seven flair of standing up with the little guy to the big incoming monster. It's, it kind of loses that. And in a way, it pushes back on the whole idea of the Western hero. But that's only half the equation. We still have of dead. And frankly, that's where the bigger changes occur. Right off the bat, we're in purgatory. And I don't know about you, but I don't think many religions view purgatory as opening in a bar. The bartender's friendly. He's not there to torture you. He's your ally. In fact, gives you the healing after you get through a level in case you lost any health or consumed some from your little flask or both. He's a staple of every run. Seeing him again reminds you that you've started over. And he usually says something encouraging. Similarly, there's a bounty poster on the wall and you don't start going up or down. There's no stairs. You're not descending a level right off the bat or climbing up. This isn't a Dante in Purgatory. We're not walking up a mountain through levels of sin, nor are we climbing down through hell's levels. You go east and west of dead. Now, different souls want to go different directions, but it's never objectively stated which is better, and it's not clear that your progress is ever saved. I mean, it's not by the nature of the game, but it's unclear if you ever could, or if you're just endlessly walking in a direction towards something hopefully better. Similarly, uh, a lot of the common religious imagery is reversed here. The villain has taken up the moniker Preacher, and he's now out there stopping souls from moving on, gunning them down as they try to pass him and his cronies. However, the person who purges you of the sin you accumulate, and you can take on the burden of other people's sin, which is definitely uh, Christian in its view, is no religious figure. It's a witch. Uh, the witch purges your sin. She's the only merchant that has lasting impacts, and she's really important. In fact, you can't even leave her room without doing a little sin purge. For those reasons, she really is a refutation of the expectations around purgatory. Here is a, a non... or here's an individual without a greater religious group context. She is independent, pagan, and part of the system. Now, I don't think there's any deep religious meanings to this game, nor is it advocating for the, the death of any ideology. I just think it's trying to push back on all of its influences as strongly as it can, incorporating as many and leaving as little overbearing specifics to any one. I think that's pretty great. All in all, the game does a good job of selling this kind of weakened Western loose dead scenario. There's no specific angle that you can say this is a, a proxy of. And in doing so, it creates a pretty unique experience. So where does this leave us? Have I spent this time in a weird accent refuting uh, an entire iconic genre and organized religious views from every culture ever? No, I don't think that's what the game's trying to do at all. I think it's just building on a variety of influences. It paints a picture. We build in with the West, with our six shooters and our saloons, our cowboys gunning down criminals, and a drab color palette reminiscent of the kind of graying out of a lot of these storylines. Similarly, the religious imagery is solid and it comes in, but it's mostly there as a framework. We're talking purgatory, preachers, sin and death cycle. Then the game turns around and takes away all the simple stoic virtues of the Western and strips away the uh, traditional views of purgatory and kind of makes up its own afterlife. It has a good knowledge of other cultures and their interests, at least it seems so to me, and I could be wrong, and please correct me if I am, but it, it does a, a good job of blending all of its influences, not discrediting any of them, 
and I'm just presenting you with a game that has a unique look and feel. It's gritty, it's grimy, and it's a roguelike. It has a unique western flair that I think is sadly missing from a lot of games. I'm glad that Red Dead 2 came out and similar titles. I have others that I want to play through for this channel because I like the western aesthetic and I think games like this do a good job of modernizing it to a new era. Whether or not you like roguelikes, you might want to give this a shot. West of Dead is a solid title with fun mechanics and at the end of the day it really is gameplay focused. As nice as stories are, I played through this game because I enjoyed how it felt to play. It was tough, rewarding, and fun. And it had a good look to boot, built on a lot of solid substructural influences like we've talked about. So, if you could stand that weird half accent I did rather than commit to the whole thing and just go reel down with it, where I was, or you just liked the topic, I appreciate that you stayed. Uh, as always, I am Huey, this is the channel Delta, I make long form videos on Wednesday, I do lore throughs, but they're currently on pause because of college and also just because of general interest in them. I hope to have another main theme video out the coming Wednesday, though my schedule is a little bit up in the air right now. But on that note, I will leave you. Go get them, partner.